uh, Newbern was established uh, along the Great Road. Uh, it was um, originally built in the, you know, developed in the last years, the 1700s, the first years, the 1800s. Uh, it's situated along a high ridge right there in central Pulaski County, about two miles back from the river. And uh, it, um, it, in other descriptions of it, it is described as occupying a high and, uh, and airy place. It was named Newburn after Bern, Switzerland, because from that high ridge you can see the mountains in either direction, and it reminded the early German settlers of their home in Germany and, and Switzerland and, and the mountains that they saw there. Um, it derived its early life from the travelers along the Great Road. Newburn was a place of wheelwrights and wagon rights, uh, taverns, um, saddleries, um, harness makers, blacksmiths, all sorts of things like that. Um, and then it served the local community. I mean, there were, it was a growing farming area and it was sort of central to, um, to that area. Um, it, was, it was located in Montgomery County. Uh, it was on the, the western end of Montgomery County. It was not very far from the Wythe County line. Um, and um, it, it occupied a really kind of essential spot in that part of the, of the region because it was a, quite a distance between Christiansburg and Evansham, the town that eventually became Withful. Uh, it was about a day's ride from Withful to Newburn and a day's ride from Christiansburg to Newburn. So, you know, it was about a halfway point. Um, and, but as the, as the Great Road developed, as people began to migrate into the old Northwest and Southwest territories, as settlers came along that road, Newburn grew, it gained in importance, uh, and it became a, a layover, a stop along that road. People, um, after crossing the New River, going west, uh, that was a, it was a good and a logical place to, to stop, and that's, that's kind of how Newburn evolved. Um, when the county was formed, when Pulaski County was formed from, from Montgomery and Wythe County in 1839, the logical place to put the county seat was Newburn, uh, and the first court met there, um, and it, it became a, a trading center, an agricultural center, and still central to all of that, a travel center. Um, and beginning about 19, or 1839, beginning in, in 1839, Newburn was in the ascendancy. It was, a, it was a, a very prosperous, wealthy county seat town in southwestern Virginia. Uh, it had, um, you know, a usual stratified society, upper class, middle class, uh, working class families. Um, when the railroad was built in the 1850s, uh, the, re the, um, the stop, the Newburn stop, was about two miles to the north uh, at a place they called Dublin Depot because it was up at the head of Dublin Hollow. And um, Dublin Hollow, or New Dublin, of course, uh, not the New Dublin that we know now, but the New Dublin that was built right on the river where McCorkle's store was, um, was established by some Irish settlers, uh, you know, in the late 1700s not very far uh, up from Dunkard's Bottom. But the railroad was there, and uh, it really was Newburn Depot or Dublin Depot. Um, in 1857, uh, there, an article appeared in Harper's Illustrated, which was, um, it was published in installments, and it gave the account of a family or a group of travelers uh, of the leisure class who traveled from Portsmouth, Newport News, Norfolk area, and wanted to travel the new railroad that uh, was coming through the country. It was right after the railroad was opened. And um, one of those guys, the guys that, that wrote the article, is named uh, Peter Larkin. Now, I don't know if that's a pseudonym or not, but uh, he describes getting off the train at Dublin Depot, letting the party go ahead down to Abingdon, and he um, walked from the depot over to Newburn. He talked about stopping at Big Beast Tavern and getting uh, a bite to eat, 
And what he wanted to see was Godby's Cliffs, which were over on the river, which were a, a, a famous um, geologic formation of limestone bluffs that ran for about a mile or two miles along the, the New River, just out from Newbern, and it was called Godby's because on the opposite side of the river from where the cliffs were was the farm of William Godby, and he was a major landowner, a very wealthy farmer in that area. A lot of his land encompassed uh, part of what was then known as Dunkard's Bottom. It was down amongst the Cloyds, the McGavocks, the Howes. Um, Across the river, uh, on the Newburn side of the river, for, and at the base of those cliffs, was the Woolwine place. Um, the Wisers were there. There were a number of other kinds of families that had farms along the rivers. Um, but Peter Larkin talks about being in the Godby house. He talks about it being a block house that was um, several, um, that was reminiscent of the houses that were built there in defense against Indian attacks in the early days of the frontier. And he talks about uh, the old, what he described as the old man Godby and his son and grandson and talks about them having lived there and quote unquote on the butt end of a century. So obviously they had been there for 75 or 80 years and this was in 1857 or so. So, you know, they had some, some deep roots there. I'm descended directly from the Godby family and the Woolwine family, which were right across the river there. But he, he describes those cliffs, he describes Newburn, um, and it pretty much um, um, talks about it in terms of its notoriety, its, uh, the geographic or geological notoriety, but also um, I think the importance of the community is a stop on the Great Road. And of course that was then being eclipsed by the railroad, which was new then, and most of the traffic west was then taking place on the railroad. One of the things I think that we need to remember um, about the Great Road is that uh, you know there were scores of hundreds of settlers that came along that road. They came down the Valley of Virginia, they came through Christiansburg, they made it to New River, they crossed at Ingalls Ferry, and then Ingalls Bridge, uh, which was a, um, a toll bridge. Um, and, and then they made their way up to Newburn, that long incline from the, from the river, uh, basically following um, the Hazel Holler Road, what, what we now know as the Hazel Holler Road. But scores of hundreds of people um, on foot, on horseback, in wagons pulled by horses and mules and oxen, on their way to um, the Northwest Territories, the Southwest Territories, you know they were they were the the frontiers people of of that age and and they were going to to settle America. What we don't really spend a whole lot of time talking about are the people that came along that road without any choice. Uh, you know there were there were members of those families, wives and daughters, uh, mostly, some children, I'm sure, who, who didn't want to leave, who didn't want to go to the West, who didn't want to go into those uncharted and unmapped territories that, that were pulled up from home and neighbors and went without having any choice in the matter. There were also, and this is, this is I think, both tragic and um, so very important, is that at the time, you know, at the time that Newburn was, was established and through most of its, its early days, Virginia's cash crop it was the exportation of uh, African slaves to the cotton plantations of Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, Louisiana, Western Tennessee. And by the thousands, uh, plantations in Tidewater and Piedmont, Virginia were, were selling off slaves, busting up families, putting them together in these coffles, and they were force marched uh, all the way from eastern Virginia down into the deep south. And 
1834, before Newbern became the county seat, an Englishman writes of watching a coffle of about 300 slaves being forced across New River. And as I talk to people about all this, I say, you know, if, there was, if that was one crossing, how many hundreds of others were there? If that was one day, how many hundreds of other days were there in which these coffles of slaves were um, marched through Newburn on their way to, to the rest of their lives without any choice? And what effect did that have on that community? How did people take that? How did they wrap their minds around this, this reality that was going on around them all the time and define that place? I think we, we have a pretty good idea that um, Newburn being a layover on the trail uh, also offered a place where these people were pinned or chained for the night where they could fix a meal and before they were forced on the next day. And, uh, you know, that's part of the history of that place. It's embedded in it. It's a part of it. Um, so, you know, I think in a lot of ways, when we look at Newburn, we, we have an opportunity to look at the, at the contradictions and the um, conflicts and the struggles of the American story. It's, it is, yes, it's this little town in southwest Virginia, but it's as much a part of this larger American experience, and particularly because it was developed uh, as, a, as a community along the route of the Great Road.